All right, so lesson six is on combinations of functions and composite functions, so composition of functions. Okay, so if you guys remember in Algebra 2, we talked about this. So with the sum, you might see it as f plus g in parentheses of x. That just means take your f of x function, add it to the g of x function. Same for subtraction, multiplication, division. Totally makes sense, right? So when I see f minus g of x in the first example, I don't freak out by that notation. I just think of it as f of x minus g of x. So I take my entire um, f of x function, 4x minus 2, and you can put parentheses around it if you want. And I take out my entire g of x function. For this part, you definitely need parentheses. So it's x squared plus x minus 6 because we're subtracting out that entire thing. So we start simplifying. So we're like, OK, I got 4x minus 2 minus x squared minus x plus 6. I get negative x squared plus 3x plus 4 for my answer. That's what f minus g of x is equal to. All right, so now it says, then evaluate the sum when x is equal to 2. So if I'm finding the sum when x is equal to 2, I'm finding f plus g of 2. Now I'm adding the two functions together. So if you're evaluating it for a certain number, then I would just find f of 2 plus g of 2. I'd find each individual thing and then add them together. Because we don't have to go through that whole process to find the whole sum, like with x's, if we're just evaluating it at a number. So f of 2, what is f of 2? Look at our f of x function. 4 times 2 minus 2. 6, yep, plus g of 2. 2 squared is 4 minus, or plus 2 minus 6. It's 0, good. So 6 plus 0 is 6. All right, are we feeling better about this section than we were with the story problems? All right, so number two, so given f of x is equal to x squared plus 4 and g of x is equal to the square root of x minus 2, find f divided by g of x. What is the domain of f divided by g? Then evaluate the sum when x is equal to negative 1. Okay, so I didn't write these notes. Mrs. Hogan wrote this section. All right, so we have f and g, so we're going to divide them out. So we have x squared plus 4 divided by the square root of x minus 2. That's f divided by g. So it says, well, what is the domain of f divided by g? So we need to think about what makes it undefined. OK, so tell me some numbers that don't work. 2. 2, because it gives you a 0 in the denominator. What also doesn't work? Negative like negative 2 doesn't work because you'd have negative 2 minus 2 under a square root, right? What about 0? Does it work? No. no. OK, so we want to think about where x minus 2 is positive, greater than or equal to 0. But can it be equal to 0? No, because it's on the denominator. So we want x minus 2 to be greater than 0, which means x is greater than 2. That's our domain. So you can write it in interval notation, or you can write it as x is greater than 2. I don't care. So if it was interval notation, it would be 2 to infinity, like that. So our f divided by g looks like this, and our domain is 2 to infinity. Okay, so now it says evaluate the sum when x is equal to negative 1. I wonder if she's meaning the sum or she's saying evaluate this when x is equal I don't know. So we'll do it. So f plus g of negative 1 is going to be f of negative 1 plus g of negative 1. So what happens? When we do f of negative 1, we get 5. What about g of negative 1? It's undefined. What's 5 plus undefined? undefined, right? We can't add 5 to a number that we don't know, so our whole answer is undefined. Okay. All right, so for the next one it says find f plus g of x, f minus g of x, f times g of x, and f divided by g of x. What is the domain of f divided by g of x? Okay, so for part A, if we're adding the two functions together, we're just going to have x squared plus 1 over x plus 1. That's it. That's f plus g of x. For b, f minus g of x is x squared minus 1 over x plus 1. c, f times g of x, we'd have our x squared multiplied by 1 over x plus 1. 
which makes it x squared divided by x plus 1. Right? We just multiply them together. That's f times g. And then d, if I do f divided by g, I take my x squared and I'm dividing by, I'm going to use this old school division method sign, divided by 1 over x plus 1. So what happens? You do the reciprocal. We're going to do x squared times x plus 1 over 1, right? So we don't need the over 1. So I'll put parentheses. So we get x cubed plus x squared. Okay, so here's the weird thing. So it says, what is the domain of f divided by g of x? So when you look at the domain of f divided by g of x, it's like, oh, f divided by g ends up being x cubed plus x squared. It looks like, so it looks like the domain is negative infinity to infinity. Okay, so a lot of people will be like, oh, done, domain negative infinity to infinity. However, if I asked you along the way, if I said, find f divided by g of, I don't know, f divided by g of, what number do I want? What would be bad? Let's do negative 1. What if I asked you to find this? What happens? Undefined. Why is that undefined? Yeah, we can't have negative 1, right? That would be bad. That's illegal. So that, whatever the domain of g of x is, we have to include that. Like, whatever makes g of x equal to 0, we have to include that as not being in our domain. And that's what it said here. It said, as long as g of x is not equal to 0 for the quotient. So we have to think about where g of x is equal to 0. So let's say, but g of x equals 0. Well, not even equals 0. It's undefined. g of x is undefined. for x equals negative 1, so we have to include it. Or, I don't know if we should say include or we have to remove it. I don't know. We're not including it, right? We're removing it from the domain. Let's say, so we have to remove it. So our domain is actually negative infinity to infinity, not negative infinity to infinity, negative infinity to negative 1 union negative 1 to infinity. We have to skip over that negative 1. And that's the only thing that made it bad. All right, so same idea on the next one. So we'll skip the adding and subtracting. Do you guys feel pretty good skipping the adding and subtracting? All right, multiplication. So if we start on part C, if I did f times g of x, it's going to be 1 over x times 1 over the square root of x plus 3. So I'd write that as 1 over x root x plus 3. So you can leave the square root in the denominator. We're not going to like rationalize it or anything. We'll leave it like that. So d is f divided by g of x. So we take our f of x function and we divide by our other one, our 1 over the square root of x plus 3. So as Greta was saying, when we divide by that fraction, we're going to flip it and multiply by the reciprocal. So we do times the square root of x plus 3 over 1. So we get a total of the square root of x plus 3 over x. OK, so we're going to look at the final domain. So the final domain is that x can't be 0. And what about the numerator? So what about this part right here, the square root of x plus 3? What does x have to be greater than or equal to? x is greater than or equal to negative 3. OK, but we go back to our g of x function. OK, so go all the way back to the beginning, actually to our f of x as well. And we look at their individual domains. So what is f of x? What could it not be? It couldn't be 0. Is that still in our final domain anyway? Yeah, so we don't have to include that. But you know, if we were doing f of 0 divided by g of 0, we'd have an issue. So yeah, we have x can't be 0. What about here? Can't be yeah, we actually can't have negative 3. So for the domain for this one, we say x has to be greater than 3, and x can't be 0. So we need f and g's domain as well. 
So our final domain is x can't be 0, but it has to be bigger than negative 3, but can't include negative 3. So it's going to look like that on a number line. So we can't include negative 3 because of the g of x function, right? Because we couldn't have negative 3 here. So basically, if I was asking you to find individual points, and I said, find f of negative 3 divided by g of negative 3, what would happen? For our g of negative 3, we'd be like, oh, this part's undefined, right? So if any place we had undefined, it can't be included in the final domain. Does that make sense? It's kind of weird. So our domain is going to be parentheses negative 3 to 0, union 0 to infinity. So Greta, did you have a question? You got it figured out. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, so you're looking at the final domain, but you're also considering what was the initial domains as well. All right, I'm a fast writer, I know. You tell me this every year in my evaluations. Are we good? All right, I'm flipping the page. Okay, so it says use the graph of f and g to graph a new function, h of x, which is f plus g of x. So we're basically taking f of x and we're adding it to g of x. So we're going to think about certain points. So at negative 2, so x equals negative 2, my f of x function, let me draw it in a different color, is at a height of 2. My g of x function is at a height of 4. What's 2 plus 4? 6. So that means that h of x is going to go through negative 2, comma, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 2, comma, 6. Do you guys see what I did there? So if you want to write it out as a table, it might make more sense. So we have our f function, our g function, and our h function is the two added together. So at negative 2, we had a height of 2 for f of x. We had a height of 4 for g of x. So when we find f plus g of x, we got 6. So we have the point negative 2 comma 6. Okay, so what's another good point? How about 0? At 0, we had the f function was at 0, the g function was at 2, so when I add them together, I get 0 comma 2. Let's do 1. At 1, they're both at 1. 1 and 1, so their h of x function is 2. So 1 comma 2. At 2, we're at 0. Oh, no. The first one's 2, and then 0, so we're at 2. Oh, man, they're all like at 2. That's confusing, isn't it? At g of x, so at 4, we're at um, f of x is 4, g of x is 2. So we're at a height of 6. So it looks kind of like it tapers off and becomes flat, but I don't think it does. So let's try some other points. So let me just draw on this graph. Maybe that'll make sense. So we had negative 2, or we had 2 plus 4 gave us 6. And then at negative 1, we had 1 plus 3 gave us 4. At 0, we had 0 plus 2 gave us 2. At 1, we had 1 plus 1 also gave us 2. I feel like we need, like, points in between there. It's kind of confusing without them. It? It's like it doesn't really, like, taper off. I guess if these are going downwards and these are going upwards, maybe it does. So, like, see how these are the same graphs, but they have opposite points? So I think it does taper off to 0 there. Did you guys see that? So since this one's going downwards and this one goes in the opposite direction upwards, I think maybe they do taper off to 0 there. So I think it looks something like that. So we can try some of those half points if we need to, but I think that's what it looks like. All right, so number four. So it says evaluate the indicated function. So if I do f minus g of 0, just do f of 0 minus g of 0. So we get negative 3 minus 1 fifth. So we can combine. I'd have negative 15 over 5 minus 1 over 5, <coughs> which is negative 16 fifths. All right, do we feel pretty good about this stuff? How about d? f times g of negative 3. So f times g of um, negative 3. So I'm going to find f of negative 3, and I'm going to multiply by g of negative 3. 
and then I'm going to add it to g of negative 4. So f of negative 3, what do we get? 9 minus 3, so 6. g of negative 3, what do we get there? <coughs> 1 over 2, plus g of negative 4, 1 over 1. So we get 3 plus 1, which is 4. I think those are probably pretty easy for you guys. You like those ones? Okay. All right, so let's get to the composition of functions. So these are the ones that are like f of g of x and g of f of x. So it says the domain of f of g of x is the set of all x in the domain of g. So it said g is in the domain of f, so it's a little confusing. So the way I always say it is, in other words, the intersection is the final domain with the inside function's domain, so where they overlap. Okay, so we'll talk about that. So this first one, if I have f of g of x, do you guys remember how that's really f of g of x, like with parentheses? I don't read it as fog. Fog and golf. That's weird. I just say f of g of x. All right, so f of g of x means that we take our f function and we put our g function, which is 3 minus x squared, inside of it. So just like if I had f of 7, I would go to my f function, which is here, and I would replace my x value with 7. Right? So when I have f of 3 minus x squared, do you guys remember what we're doing? We're replacing our x value with 3 minus x squared. So we're going to get 3 minus x squared plus 7. So we get 10 minus x squared. Everybody feels good about this? You remember this? Some people are like, no, I've never seen this. Okay, Brooke, you didn't see this at your other school? Okay, so g of f of x, so I go g of x plus 7. That's my f of x function. So since f of x is x plus 7. Mm -hmm. What about the, like, x on the side? That's just of x. It's like, you know how, like, when you did f plus g of x, it's telling you, like, what, what value to plug in for x. So we're just leaving it as x, oh. basically. So it's like f of x plus g of x. All right, so we have g of x plus 7, so we go to our g function and we replace our x with x plus 7. So we get 3 minus x plus 7 squared. Okay, so we can FOIL this out and simplify. I'm just going to leave it like that. So it says, well, what about g of f of negative 3? Well, that's g of f of negative 3. And we just found g of f of x. So we could start from the inside and find f of negative 3 first. What's f of negative 3? 4. And we say, oh, well, now we have g of 4. And then we go to our g function, and we find g of 4, 3 minus 16, and we get negative 13. Or you could go, given f of x equals x squared, and g of x equals the square root of 4 minus x squared, find the domain of f of g of x. So f of g of x is going to be f parentheses g of x. So g of x is the square root of 4 minus x squared. We take that and we replace our x value with the square root of 4 minus x squared. So we have the square root of 4 minus x squared squared. So we get 4 minus x squared. All right, so it looks like the domain should be negative infinity to infinity. Guys, you need this for your homework, so let's wait 20 seconds. So it looks like the final domain should be negative infinity to infinity. But you have to consider what we started with. So look Good at the inside function. Good morning, university. Just a reminder that assembly is at the end of the day, so go to your third period class. Thank you. Think about what we couldn't have for 4 minus x squared. Think about numbers. Does zero work? Yeah. One work? Two works? Yeah. Three? No. What about negative two? Yeah. Negative three? No. So between negative two and two, any number that we would have chosen originally would work, but on the outside of negative two and two, any number we would have chosen would not work. So our domain, oops, our, I did it the wrong way, didn't I? Our domain should be the inside part of this. Those are the only numbers that work, including negative 2 to 2. So our final domain should be bracket negative 2 to 2, like that. Okay, and we'll talk more about those, but go ahead and do your homework that's in the book. Um, if you guys need.